today's flip classroom topic is centripetal force now you're probably gonna ask me what is the definition of centripetal force I'm not gonna give you the definition because the definition gonna lead you to memorization and memorization is a crime rather I want to engineer Eureka how can I engineer Eureka by give you a demo okay let's consider a rope and a mass hanging on a rope okay so a rope and mass hanging on a rope now I'm gonna model moon and earth okay how can I do that I'm gonna apply some force okay my hand gonna apply some force on the rope okay and rope gonna pull understand that rope can only pull it does not push okay so rope gonna pull if I if I apply some force to the rope rope gonna pull the mass so let's let's consider this as a moon okay and my hand is art my hand gonna apply some centripetal force as a result the rope will experience some force on it and rope gonna pull the moon and rope gonna keep the moon in a circular path around the earth now you have to pay attention to a few things first velocity you understand that the distance between the moon to earth is 384,000 kilometers okay so that's the radius of this rope now what is the velocity of the moon the velocity of the moon is perpendicular with respect to the centripetal force and centripetal acceleration that means the velocity of this moon or apple rather is perpendicular with respect to the rope because the direction of the centripetal force and centripetal acceleration is toward the center now you're probably thinking i don't see any rope between the moon and the earth well you don't see because you don't understand there is a rope we call that gravity okay gravity is a rope that keeping the moon orbiting in a circular path around the earth now let's give you the mathematical derivation of the equation for centripetal acceleration and centripetal force few moments later the moon gonna be here and few second moment later the moon gonna be here and here and here and here it takes understand 27.3 days to complete one cycle complete one revolution or to move around the earth let's let's cut it in slice let's cut this part in slice let's see what happened okay so this is what are you and few moment later moon is over here let's make it small is the radius radius of the rope this one is also radius of the rope this one is the length okay good now velocity one and this one is velocity velocity two so this is perpendicular with respect to the rope i'm gonna have this velocity vector the, the first one and this velocity vector this is v1 and i'm gonna move this velocity vector over here okay velocity two now the change of velocity would be this one this is the change of velocity okay now these are two similar triangles we're going to use similar triangle properties to prove that the centripetal acceleration understand that the velocity one and velocity two the speed are the same the speed of the moon over here is same as the speed of the moon over there the speed does not change what changes is the uh the direction so one thing we know now that change in direction also causes the acceleration so acceleration causes two different ways one is change in magnitude causing acceleration a car moves two meter per second and subject to a force and moves four meter per second 
few moments later, the car is accelerating. Okay, this is one way a car can accelerate. Other way a car can accelerate, the car move around the circle. If a car move around the circle, then every moment car changes the direction, the car is accelerating. So change in magnitude causing acceleration and change in direction also causing acceleration. Since the both velocity are the same, we can say velocity one is equal to velocity two is equal to just velocity. So now we're going to use the similar triangle uh, properties to prove the centrifugal acceleration and then centrifugal force. Delta L, uh, delta V is equal to uh, the R over V2. Before we do cross multiplication, we just want to make sure that we have, since V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V, we just going to write right here, we're going to V. So delta L is equal to delta over delta V is equal to R over V. Now we can cross multiply, we can write, we can write delta V R is equal to delta L and then V is equal to V over R delta L. Now we can divide both sides by delta T. If we do that, then we're going to get a magic. Let's see what we get. Delta V over delta T is acceleration, of course. A change in velocity over change in time is acceleration. In this case, you're going to call it centrifugal acceleration is equal to V over R. Delta L over delta T is a V because velocity is distance over time, and this is distance, this is time. So now acceleration, centrifugal acceleration is V squared over R. All right, now force is equal to ma. Now centrifugal force is equal to m centrifugal acceleration. So f centrifugal force is m centrifugal acceleration is v squared over r. So centrifugal force is m v squared over r. Okay. Now, what causes this circular motion around my hand? Well, centrifugal force coming from my hand. So what causes the centrifugal acceleration? Well, due to centrifugal force. Now, what is the centrifugal acceleration on the moon due to Earth? Well, very small, less than one. How much is the centrifugal force on this apple? Well, it's a lot, very close to 95. If the rope breaks, whose direction the apple will go. Some people will think the outward direction because some people think the apple experience trifugal force. Well, that's not true. The apple will not go outward. If rope breaks, apple moves with constant velocity in a straight line. Free Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.